Good morning, this is Frank Ford, the program Insight Delaware Valley. We are pre-taped and brought to you daily, Monday through Friday, from the window of 10 Federal Savings Alone at 1627 Wall Street in the center of the city of Philadelphia. Today we talk about film, otherwise known as movies, or uh, you name it what you will. Our guest today is Amos Vogel, who is director of film at the Annenberg Center, and a faculty member of the Annenberg School of the University of Pennsylvania. Out of the, the Annenberg Center, they've been running some unusual programs in film, they call it the Annenberg Cinema Tech, and we'll talk to Amos Vogel, director of film at the Annenberg Center and a faculty member of the Annenberg School at the University of Pennsylvania. Uh, I guess, uh, Amos, perhaps we might uh, begin by saying, uh, what's the, uh, you know, what's the film, the whole program, the Cinema Tech, and, and uh, why do we have film at a university? When I went to Penn, which was uh, before the Civil War, I think, movies were something you went to in the neighborhood. You never associate that with a university. It mm -hmm. won't change, hasn't it? Yes, it has. Uh, film is now generally, and I think justly considered, uh, a major art form. It's the only art developed in our century. It's an art that's very closely connected with young people. They're very much affected by it. It comes out of technology and a joining of technology and aesthetics, you might say. And of course, in all major universities now, there are film departments, there are huge film classes. You can get an MA and a PhD in film, film history, film aesthetics. And of course, many of the universities show films, uh, have cinema texts or have showcases, you know, where films are shown. And here uh, at the university, we're very fortunate in having the Annenberg Center, which is, of course, the performing arts center here in town. And, um, uh, George Gerben, who is the dean of the Annenberg School, called me in about a year and a half ago and said, we must have film here. And I said, yes, I agree. <laughs> that did it. That did it. So that I'm both teaching film as well as uh, showing films there. Uh, originally, in terms of my teaching, uh, the university assumed that I would have about 50 or 60 students. I'm now running a course there that has 450. 450 students instead, you know, that gives you an indication of the interest among the students in, uh, in this particular medium. And uh, I'm running this cinema tech at the university. Uh, we show at least two different films a day, five days a week during the school year, concentrating particularly on films that are unusual, that are not shown, generally speaking, in Philadelphia, introducing new talents old classics, shorts, experimental films, political films, anything you can possibly think of. And now for the first time we are going into, I think, a very fascinating project. For the first time we're going to the Zellerbach Theater, you know. Mm -hmm. That's it's not the only theater. Yeah, that's the uh, Joe Papp, uh, right. the Phoenix Theater, uh, and the dance attractions, all the great things they've been doing there. Now, for the first time, we will have a festival of film at the Zellerbach, uh, the end of November, November 21 to 24, and we'll premiere four big films that have not yet been shown in Philadelphia at the Zellerbach, and I, I have great hopes for that. Now, I noticed that in the literature sent out by the uh, university, as it pertains to the film department at the Annenberg Center, you say the particular emphasis is upon significant, unusual films otherwise unavailable, unknown, or unseen. And you have features and shorts, new films from international festivals that you mentioned, neglected classics, and so forth. To do the research, to dig these up, uh, has to be a major, this must be a major work in itself, just to to find out where these things are. That's, that's the, of course, that's one of the things that you do. That, that it's an unbelievable job, and it's a job that I've been doing for the last 25 years. I have personal archives at home uh, in terms of information about films, not that I own films, yes. you know, of about 40,000 films. Uh, I, haven't be, I, I can't begin to tell you how many films I see. You know, when I go to the Cannes mm -hmm. Film Festival, I can see six to seven features in one day, mm -hmm. and I'm there for two weeks. Uh, it's a never-ending job because it's an extremely alive, vital field with a lot of people constantly making new things, new talents coming up, uh, beautiful films that have to be, you know, shown and seen. 
and this is my field and I'm, I'm very lucky to be able to combine my preferences with my my work you know? yeah because your your academic background uh, when you were a college student and going for a degree and so forth your academic background is, uh, is political science and economics you didn't uh, you didn't learn about film by going to the university like the young people do today that's correct <laughs> as you get like into this you're just, just lucky I guess as we say well uh, you also mentioned to Amos Vogel that uh, young people are into the film thing. I know, for example, I go to the movies in town, I live in town, I, so, so I see most of the pictures in town, and frequently uh, I may be the oldest <laughs> oldest person in the movie house. And it seems that all uh, there is no such thing anymore as there are no holes barred, any kind of language. I'm not decrying, I'm merely commenting on it. They can say anything and show almost anything, and nobody gets uptight anymore about it. Uh, that may be because the young people uh, kind of grew up in a kind of violent world or perhaps even one might say a more honest world is being shown on film today. What do you think? Well, they grew up in a different world, you see, and this is the way it ought to be. You know, the world changes constantly, hopefully for the better. Sometimes I have my doubts, grave doubts. Yeah. But uh, it is a different world and the young people have different values. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, there's more violence in the world and in a sense the, the young are more accepting of it. Uh, I think that's unfortunate, but on the other hand, uh, it's a true representation of what goes on around us when we look around us. They're more honest, in my opinion, about sex than our generation was, and I welcome that, if anything. Uh, and I think, generally speaking, the, the films that are being made nowadays reflect these new values of not young people. And it's really up to our generation to understand that and uh, to sympathize with it, uh, and to go with it because you know uh, the future does not belong to us well on the other hand they say that one of the uh, one of the attributes or one of the advantages of being older is being in a position to advise to uh, discuss with people and so forth uh, we're really in different worlds you go to the, you go to the movies today and, and I, I hear many people say older people people many age people they say I rarely go to movies anymore. I don't want to hear the dirty words. I don't want to see the crummy people. I don't want to see the violence. I don't want to see the blood get out of the guy's part. Yeah. We have enough of that in life. Shouldn't movies be an escape? Shouldn't movies be not a reflection of life, but rather a, a real entertainment? How do you respond to that? My response is, first of all, uh, the majority the majority of films that are being made nowadays still are that kind of film, you know, film with entertainment values and staying away from that kind of language. So my advice to such people, and of course they, I think, in a sense, may still represent the majority, is not to go to films that will offend them, you know. And then to others, uh, they should go to the kind of films that they want to see. It's a, You know, no one forces you to go into a movie house. And sometimes I almost get the impression that uh, certain people go to the, go, go to the movies uh, in order to then come out and be very upset about what they have seen, they're both titillated, you know, and repelled, and maybe uh, next month, next week they'll go again. Well, either that or else they don't know what they're going to see, you know, that happens too. That's true, and I think there should be some system where, whereby people are told in advance more or less what they will see. I know, not a censorship system, but an advisory system. You yeah, know. as you know, there was wide controversy, maybe still, I don't know, about the uh, last tango in Paris. Yes. And many people went to see the film and say, well, you know, it's uh, Marlon Brando. Nobody expected anything pornographic or uh, pseudo-pornographic. Yeah. Right. Right. They sat there and shocked the language yeah. of right. what happened and the sex and so forth. Yeah. They came out and said it's nothing sacred. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, there's this tremendous and increasing pace of uh, change. Uh, in society, you know, there was even a book about that future shock. Yes, I remember yes. some time ago. So that last tango in Paris by now is already, in many respects, almost I hate to say it, dated. You know, and there are other films. Yes. But uh, in, in terms of advising people what to see, uh, to give you one example, uh, at the Zellerbach, one of the films we are premiering is a very famous uh, recent film, something called The Mother and the Whore. This was called. But the New York Times, the, they called it the most important film of 1973, it was at various film festivals. Mm -hmm. Now we make very clear in our description of this film, we say, suggested for adults only. 
Yeah, but what is an adult? That, that mentally or, or, or uh, chronologically, how do you define an adult? You can't. No, that's no, the right, problem. Right. I have well, 16 year old yeah. kids that are so mature and so bright, they can yeah. me. And notice that the uh, notice that the word is suggestive, you know, because I'm uh, I'm a, an enemy of censorship. I, I don't believe in it. Do you do I? All I all I say is that if you don't want to see something or read something, don't read it. And if somebody else does, he should have the right to do so. And of course, one shouldn't hurt the other. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think that you should impose your values on right. somebody else in both directions. But the, you don't ask for age cards at the box office at the uh, Zeller Box Theater? No, it's suggested. Okay. So, but you don't have anybody, <coughs> anybody no. from the, uh, no. from the university no. taking age cards? No. Our guest, Amos Bogle, director of film at the Annenberg Center and a faculty <coughs> member at the Annenberg School of the University of Pennsylvania. <coughs> We're talking about the new uh, the weekend of new cinema at the Zeller Box Theater. Now, the, the film mentioned a little while ago, The Mother and the Whore, now that's... Uh, You'll have four performances. Well, you have all, all kinds of performances for, for daytime, nighttime, with different. You're really mixing it up so you can go right. and see everything. Right. Is it true that that movie, according to this program, is three and a half hours long? That is possible. Right. <laughs> yes, it is. It's a very old mother or a very old. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> how can a picture take three and a half hours? Uh, that's almost incredible. Well, there's a lot of uh, talk and a lot of action. Uh, there are three young people involved in it who are interacting with each other. And you know, there is a trend nowadays with many of the serious filmmakers toward somewhat longer films. You know, you, you, you bear in mind that when we, we're used to an hour and a half films, yes. this is purely a convention. You know, there's nothing holy about it. That's the bit the and again, it's the turnover, exactly. the, uh, how much it's exactly. the views, etc. The shorter the right. film, right, the shorter the film, the more performances per day, the more money you can make in one day, right? Sure. But, uh, for instance, at the recent year film festival, I just saw a film that ran four and a half hours, so that, you know, I'm, I'm behind the times here. I'm only showing a three and a half hour film. Sure. <laughs> right. And, and uh, now, does that, that was made in France, and it was called, uh, you say, the New York Times called it possibly the most important film of 1973. Right. That, that's in the French language, I assume. French language, English subtitles. Boy, you should be reading for three and a half It's a lot of reading for three and a half Well, there's reading and seeing, you know, yes. Okay. What, what criteria, Ingrid Vogel, do you use for selecting? Now, you have a, a, uh, you have a Soviet film where the, uh, the man who directed the film is currently in, uh, in a labor camp for, uh, according to your information, for homosexuality and incitement to suicide. Have I ever heard of a phony <laughs> charge, incitement to suicide? Right. Just, it, well, this is a, this is a, it's an international scandal. Everybody's talking about this because this man is probably the best Russian director around. And this is obviously a trumped up charge. And if it isn't, it's even worse. Because, you know, at least in our society, you don't get put in jail for inciting <laughs> or somebody yes, to do it. And, and what does that mean, anyway? You know, I mean, how do you incite somebody? Right. To, I mean, well, bad <laughs> cooking, maybe. Bad <laughs> cooking. <laughs> Something like that, maybe. Yeah. That's really a very sad story, because the man is, uh, he's in his 50s, and he is in, for eight years, he's supposed to be in one of these camps, and we don't know what will happen. There's an international protest, of course, that's being organized. Now, I had said about I know, that's the, the, the Soviet film. Has that been seen before in uh, this area? It's been seen in a, in a cut version. I'm showing for the first time the uncut, complete version of this film. This has never been seen before. And yet it's only an hour and a half. Right. It was cut by about 20 minutes before. The shadow is a forgotten ancestor. Yes. And according to the literature that... that uh, that the cinema art is outstanding, that visually it's an outstanding. Visually it's one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. It's fantastic color and, and design and decor, and it's really, it's a stunning film visually. And will that also have English subtitles? Co correct, yes. Okay. Then you have a, a film by Susan Sontag, of course, who's so well known in this country. That's one that uh, was a co-production between France and Israel? Yes, she produced this. Uh, she went to Israel to make a documentary about Israel. And she was very surprised by what she saw. It's, it has to do primarily with Jewish-Arab relations, really. It's a very controversial film in the sense that it's not going to be liked by either side. Uh, the Arabs won't like it very much, and uh, if you're a real, you know, 100% Zionist, you also will have many misgivings about the film. Has it been she seen saw, in Israel? Uh, 
I don't think so. I'm not sure about the answer. So there, but showing it there, I, I really don't know what it's been seen. Well, it's a 74 film we haven't released yeah. there yet. Well, on the other hand, there was an, uh, an article in the New York Times by uh, a New York rabbi uh, writing about the recent wave of films about Jews and anti-Semitism, which commended, the article commended this film as being, you know, in the right direction. So it's, it's, it's very difficult to say how one will react, and I like that. I like to show films that will point up controversy and make people think, you know. To me, film is not an entertainment, period. First of all, you cannot make a distinction, really, in my opinion, between entertainment and something more serious. But I want people to get involved and to think and not to be passive spectators, and I want them to be changed. I think we all need changing, because the world continues the way it is now, we're in very grave difficulties. But of course, you uh, that way, though, you, you really walk away from or ignore uh, what movies were originally created for, which was a pure entertainment, not to make you think, but if anything, escape kind of a thing. That, and that's the original intent, I think. Uh, it's complicated. Uh, originally, it was uh, a documentary medium in the sense that, you know, uh, you photograph things that, uh, took, that occurred in front of the camera. Right. Uh, and then right after that came a Frenchman by the name of Méliès, who was by profession a magician and who began to make magical, very mysterious, beautiful, fantastic films. And immediately, simultaneously, there were educational films being made and fictional films, so that it's really not uh, possible to say that it was one or the other. And why should it be? You know, it's simply a method, a technological method of transmitting images. Now, what you do with that, it's just like with books. It can be entertainment, it can be Jacqueline Suzanne, it can be Sartre, it can be poetry, it can be anything, right? Uh, yeah, actually what it is, it's the growing up of film to make it and uh, not, uh, quote, a pure entertainment, but rather an artistic involvement. Yes. And that's part of growing up, since as you yes. said, film is the, the one you are of our century. Yes. Yeah. Let me get back to our guest again in a moment. Amos Vogel, who is the director of film at the Annenberg Center and a faculty member at the Annenberg School at the University of Pennsylvania. We're talking about the weekend of new cinema at the Zellerbach Theater, November the 21st through the 24th. It'll be four Philadelphia premieres. There's one more film we haven't even mentioned yet, and we'll get to that because there's a recent lead article in the Sunday Times about the film. And uh, if I ever read a rave review, it was that, and we'll talk about uh, that film in a minute. Since we are talking, since we have mentioned several times the business of youth and age and so forth in our discussion here this morning, let me address this commercial to people who are of retirement age or about to be at retirement age or know somebody who is or will be in the not too distant future. The business of retirement brings with it uh, certain situations. The problem of concern that one long-term illness might smell a spell, financial disaster for you and your family. And many people say, that's right. And what happens if I have a serious illness of long, long duration, and don't I get wiped out, and really what happens to me? Well, if you'd like information about that, we remind you that there's a life care community called Time Run, where all medical, hospital, surgical, and nursing care are provided, including prescription drugs. We live in a magnificent place, your own apartment, it's like a house, on one floor, carpeted and everything, you name it, including housekeeping and weekly linen service, maintenance, utilities, and property taxes taken care of, 24-hour emergency call system, all meals in a central dining facility with waitress service and choice of menu provided by stokers. And yet, you live just as you live in your own home, with as much privacy as you like. If you like information, there's a choice of four what they call country houses to choose from. And if you like information, get in touch with us at WFLN. The, uh, the place is called Pine Run Life Care Community. It's in Bucks County. It won't open until January of 76. But if you like information, we're happy to get it to you now and no salesman calls on you. Give us a call at IV2-6000, IV2-6000, WFLN, or right WFLN, 8200 Ridge Avenue, Philadelphia, 19128. Our guest, Amos Vogel. We're talking with Mr. Vogel about the Weekend of Unusual Cinema at the Annenberg School of the University of Pennsylvania. Incidentally, the admission charge is nothing at all like the commercial movies around town. They're $2 per, per 
per person or student or less, right? Yes, a dollar fifty for students. You're really a non-profit organization. Definitely. And, uh, <laughs> and if you've never been to the uh, to the Zellerbach Theater, it's one of the great theaters I think in the country. Really, I mean, I go there a lot because you have all the live things there. Let's get to the last film, that French film, which. Uh, this, now, this is the first Philadelphia presentation. It was really shown here, I think, in the commercial theaters, was it not? Yes. Uh, uh, called La Combe Lucienne. <clears throat> it's a French film, and we're getting this by special arrangement with 20th Century Fox. So here you have a real, you know, one of these so-called big films. Right, right? really good. <laughs> right. And uh, I'm very happy to be able to show this here because, it, again, it's one of those films that makes that will make a lot of people think a great deal. It deals with a young French adolescent during the last war, 17-year-old young fellow, uh, who becomes involved with the fascists, with the Germans, and becomes a collaborator, uh, while at the same time carrying on a, an affair with a Jewish girl. And the film begins to deal with the whole question of collaboration and, you know, where does one stand? How do you, do you collaborate with evil? Uh, do you, what do you do? You know, it's a film that's not at all about France only. No. I think it's about any country and every country and raises a great many moral and social, political, personal issues. It doesn't give any answers, I understand. Ah, right, 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 right. It's, it's very cleverly done to leave all questions open. There are no real heroes or no real villains in this film, and you, as the spectator, have to decide, you know, where do you stand in relation to this, you see? Why, is it, why does it seem to me that the most exciting films of this genre are foreign films and not Americans because I don't know any better? Or is it because that they're making them more unusual films in other parts of the world? Well, that's a very complex question. There is, uh, I would say, there is at least as much interesting work being done abroad as there is here. That is either fortunate or unfortunate, but it's a fact. Uh, perhaps it has to do with the fact that it is still cheaper to make films abroad than it is here. Uh, and there's greater, there's a certain amount of greater freedom, you know, of artistic expression, uh, perhaps less influence on the part of the businessman in terms of, you know, deciding what should go in and what should not go in from a profit point of view, you know? Mm -hmm. So that perhaps for that reason, there is uh, quite a bit of interesting work being done abroad. On the other hand, there's no doubt that a great deal of important and very original film work is being done in this country all the time. And not only in the so-called commercial sector, you know, the, the Hollywood sector, but the so-called independent film in America is very strong yeah. and very widely shown, and uh, many beautiful works come out of that.